Welcome to our lecture online. What I always find is that the JE main as well as the JE advanced uh, problems come up with some pretty interesting examples and challenging problems to deal with. Here's no exception. We're looking at some graphs that we typically don't see in a textbook. We're looking at a velocity versus distance or velocity versus dis displacement graph and then they want us to convert that into an acceleration versus displacement graph. So here we have the graph that we start with and then we're going to convert it to an acceleration versus displacement graph and we're asked to find the right conversion. Which of these four represents the acceleration versus displacement of that velocity versus displacement graph. So when was the last time that you saw a velocity versus displacement graph? Well, let's read the problem and see what we need to do. The velocity displacement graph describing the motion of a bicycle is shown in the figure, right here. The acceleration displacement graph of the bicycle's motion is best described by one of these four answers. So how do we go about doing that? Well, let's think about it this way. We know that acceleration is defined as dv dt. But we can also write it like this. We can say the acceleration is equal to dv dx times dx dt. And of course, dx dt, that's the definition of velocity. So acceleration is equal to dv dx times velocity, or better yet, it's equal to velocity times dv dx. Now, let's look at dv dx. Let's go look at this graph right here. We realize that this is v versus x, so dv dx is the slope of this graph, and notice the slope is a straight line. It is constant, which means that this quantity right here is a constant. And therefore, v changes in a linear sense. And so if acceleration is equal to v times a constant, then the acceleration must be, well, it must change, but change linearly because v is a linear function in our graph. So therefore, a must change linearly. So any representation where a doesn't change linearly is not part of the solution, which means b is not part of the solution and d is not part of the solution because a does not change linearly with respect to x, and this tells us that it should based upon our graph. So then it's either A or C. Also notice that the velocity no longer changes from 200 meters to 400 meters. If the velocity doesn't change, the acceleration must be zero. That means for that part, it must be zero. So since only it's zero here and not zero there, this cannot be the solution, so A must be the correct graph representing acceleration versus displacement of our velocity versus displacement graph. And so that's the solution. All the others do not match what we need to see based upon our analysis of the acceleration in terms of the change of velocity with respect to displacement. And that is how it's done. I remember when I first start, started seeing this, I go, how can you do that? that? That's not right. That You can't just play around with derivatives like that. But yeah, you can. You have to if you look at it. Uh, the answer. Like, yeah. I knew that acceleration was zero. 